Well, hey everyone. Hazel and I want to welcome you to another edition of Guitar Time, except this time we're not doing guitars. I want to show you the latest addition to my studio. And here it is. I got myself an electronic drum set. And, uh, yeah, it's got like 27 different internal kits, and they all suck, but uh, it also has MIDI capability, and so with a little finagling, I've been able to MIDI it through my old keyboard here and use some of the really cool kits that are in that. So, that's kind of a new experience for me. Um, getting damaged merchandise wasn't a new experience, but it was sufficiently frustrating. This is the box it came in. It's a rock jam, uh, electric, elect, blah, yeah, what, you can see what it says there, electronic mesh head drum kit, even though I can't say it. Um, it's a low-end set. It was a little over $200. And as you can see, part of the reason was because it said it had a damaged package. I thought, well, you know, that's a good price. I'll go ahead and take a chance. If it doesn't work, I can return it. So, it arrived. I set it up. I hooked it up to my little practice amplifier over here. And everything worked wonderfully, worked perfectly except the ride symbol. It had serious issues. Um, a lot of the uh, hit zone didn't respond. Sometimes it would respond with a clunk instead of a cymbal sound. And uh, yeah, obviously something was broken in it. I'm guessing it was right there in the packaging. So, I looked up the company and I emailed Rock Jam and I told them what happened. They sent me a new one. This is the new one and it works beautifully. Over here we have the old one. And so today, instead of guitar time, we're going to have how does it work? Because we're going to take this thing apart and see what makes it tick. So the first thing we're gonna do, there's four screws holding this cover on, and this cover is where the plug-in jack is. So I assume there's some kind of electronics under here. Let's find out what they look like. I have been trying to practice these drums fairly steadily. I played for a while, a long time ago, but it's been quite some time. All right, here's what we have so far. There's our jack mounted to a board there, and that is going to be the sensor, I'm pretty sure. That connects something to something else. I don't know what, so let's take these screws out and find out. So, I know the basics of how these electronic drum sets work with the the uh, sensor switches and all that stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, I know what's going on here. This is a dual zone symbol. The edge produces one sound out here and then up here produces another, a different sound so that when you're using it as a ride, you can have either the, the edge or the cup. So, 
we have one sensor going to one part of it and apparently another sensor going to the other part. That is glued down. I'm not sure if I'm ever likely to get it off. But we have this rubber surface here where we actually do the hitting. Let's see what's under it. I'm not going to be too careful about the glue because I really don't have any intentions of putting this thing back together. So this is purely an exploratory mission. And uh, if the sample gets destroyed, well, you know what? That's to be expected in an operation of this type. And there are some areas here that do not want to let go. So I may have to get a little bit destructive here, kind of like that. Again. I suppose I could have made things a little easier on myself by fastening that down again so it isn't constantly flopping in my way. But clearly... I don't have that much foresight. So, all right. Okay, it's pocket knife time. Okay. Okay, we're coming off in pieces and that's okay, but we got one stubborn spot right here that just doesn't want to give up. But I'm going to win. It's one of the things I do. So, all right, let's go ahead and peel this back and see what we have. Okay, that part was actually stuck to up here. And I even know why. Because it's going to measure how long it takes when you hit it for these things to make contact. And that's going to determine how hard you hit it and thus how loud the sound goes. So we've got this edge going all the way across here. And that's the part that is going to sound on the edge. Now, I'm still puzzled about this thing. So, let's see if we can pry it off of there. You know, I honestly have no idea. I do not see how that is supposed to pick anything up. Especially clear over there.
but it seems to be the only thing that it has the potential to be a receiver for this area up here. So I guess however it does it, it looks like it might be some kind of a piezoelectric thing. But <laughs> who really knows? In any case, if I disconnect this, from over here, then I may know I did something. Let's see what happens. This whole thing comes off. And it's just a strip of metal or something. Huh. Well, I have to say, this looks like very cheap construction which isn't surprising. Um, I didn't expect anything fancy for the price that I paid, and uh, anything fancier than this right at the moment would be wasted on me anyway because I'm still a bit of a novice at this stuff. But now I can see where the different zones are, where I need to hit, how I need to deal with this thing. I have a much better idea how it works, and thus how to interact with the ones that I have. So, I hope you found this interesting. Um, it feels almost a little anticlimactic with what we found in here, but you know what? That's how it goes. Remember Al Capone's vault. So, um, there it is. That is how an electronic symbol works how the triggers work because we got some one part attached to the upper and another part attached to the lower and when the two of them bump each other we get a sound and then there's this thing figure that one out on your own because honestly i'm stumped i will probably look it up later but uh i don't feel like doing it right now in any case, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of deconstruction slash destruction. And I will see you in the next video.